I'm Wendy Murado and I'm here with Kristen. Kristen is our shelter manager here at Kitten Crazy in Medina and we are here to do an adoption show today. That we have a ton of cats, don't we? Yes, we do. Oh Lord. <laughs> They're everywhere. Uh, spay neuter is being uh, harder and harder to get. Mm -hmm. And uh, people aren't spaying and neutering like they were when Quick Fix was open or one of a kind is now shut down. Uh, lack of vets primarily uh, is our issue here. And uh, so we are packed out, folks. Come and get a kitty. You can always add one. If you're already scooping a box, it doesn't matter, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> so let's get started. We've got a, a boatload of cats that we're going to talk about today, and this is Spats. Mm -hmm. You want to tell people where she came from? She is so cute. Uh, she oh, yeah. came from Metropolitan in uh, Copley area. And that's um, a... They're vets, Metropolitan vets. Um, and through their Good Samaritan program. You want to talk about that real quick? Uh, they will take in cats from time to time. Um, if, uh, you know, if somebody finds a cat and they are not able to afford the care, um, they will take the kitty in. Okay. And, and usually it's, shelter. is it usually somebody that they find on the street or can it be their own cat? Um, I believe it's, um, just cats that are found on the street. Yeah. Okay. I believe that's true too. Yeah. Um, so if you find an animal and it's in medical distress, you can take them to Metropolitan Veterinary Hospital. It's an emergency clinic open 24 seven out in Copley. You can look that up. And someone took her spats and we named her spats because she has spats the on her feet. <laughs> and um, someone had taken her there. We're not sure why. They will call us and say, hey, can you take a cat that's in our Good Samaritan program? I and Kristen that... typically does, because I always say we should, you know, try to help the person that was helping this cat. Mm -hmm. um, but we didn't, we didn't, we don't always know what was originally wrong with them. And when she came, she had ringworm on her foot. So she came about this big. Right. And it takes about two months for cats to clear of ringworm, you don't have to do anything. It's a fungus, it's not a worm. It's the exact same fungus as athlete's foot for us. We can get rid of athlete's foot in about a week, 10 days. It takes them about two months for it to clear. You cannot put medications on them because they'll lick it off and it's not good for them. Mm -hmm. um, but ringworm will spontaneously heal on its own. So you just give it the time to run its course through their body because ringworm is traveling inside the body as a fungus. <laughs> Bye, Spats. <laughs> she went to a foster home, happened to be my sister-in-law, Margie, did a fantastic job um, to raise her while she had the ringworm. Margie didn't get it, we don't get it. Mm -hmm. We handle ringworm. Uh, this year, worst ringworm uh, year ever. ever. Yeah. Ever. Um, so we're doing our very best to combat what, um, is just part of nature and it's the moist heat that causes these cats to get it. The number one carrier of ringworm is children, uh, mostly wrestlers on the mats, mm -hmm. uh, but small children are the number one carrier of ringworm. And the number two carrier of ringworm are cats. So um, we just happen to do cats and we're going to see ringworm uh, on occasion. But this year it's, it was such a humid summer that cats are coming in with ringworm. And right. we've never seen that. I've been doing this for 25 years. And uh, this is probably the third year in those 25 years that I've had an issue with ringworm. Yeah. So. Or they come Poor in Kristen. and we don't catch it, and then all of a sudden they break out with it five days later. Yeah. So. Yeah, um, because the stress already, of coming here. Mm -hmm, already probably harboring it probably harboring it, right. So the stress stress in cats will drop their immunity and if anything is brewing in them, it'll pop out. And that's why we tell you when you adopt a cat from us, we have paperwork that we have you read mm -hmm. and we it says on there, you're gonna adopt this perfectly healthy kitty. Come mm -hmm. here, Wendy. And we're adopting out of what we believe is a perfectly healthy kitty, mm -hmm. but we know that things are harboring underneath there potentially potentially, 
and two, three days after they get home, their eyes get a little wonky or they start sneezing because they're sniffing everything on the floor and they're yep. dust and dust and dust. And people then call back, and most people are very nice about it. Mm -hmm. Very, very nice. But we have some people that are not so nice about it. Yeah. You sold me a sick cat. How dare you? And we're like, ay. <laughs> you know? And it just kind of can put a little kibosh in your happy day mm -hmm. because we do so much for these cats. Do we not? Yes, we do. Every mm -hmm. day. Every, Every day. Every single day. And I will say this because um, I used to have, Kristen, I don't know if you ever um, watched the show or anything, uh, but I always had a hisses. I have had hiss sections or purr sections. So if like mm -hmm. I have a happy thing to say, I want to Cujo somebody, or kudos, because we have <laughs> Cujo. a Cujo. We have a cat named Cujo <laughs> here. I was just talking about Cujo earlier. We have a kudos. Like if I have a kudos, that's a purr. Mm -hmm. But if I have a that's a hiss, right? Okay. Well, I want to say a little bit of a hiss right now. Mm -hmm. So I might get myself in a little bit of trouble, but that's nothing new with my <laughs> mouth. But, um, but I want to say this, that we have vets in town, one in particular that loves to badmouth us. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to say her name, but what we do here is elusive to this person or any vet. We have not had any local vet visit this premises to see what we do. Yeah. And if you go to your local vet and they badmouth us in any way, shape, or form, you, I would like you to challenge you to ask them, have you ever been there? Have you ever seen what they do? Do you know what goes on behind the scenes over there? We are relentless at taking care of these cats. Mm -hmm. We have a team of volunteers that take care of these cats. Every week, we physically touch every one of our cats mm -hmm. and make sure that they are current on their revolution so that they don't go home with fleas. Everybody stays current on it. We have 130 cats right now. Mm -hmm. And if they are two pounds or over, they have revolution. Their nails are cut. Their collars are checked to make sure they're not their too tight. There, we check their weight to make sure they're not going down. That's because a big thing. It's yeah. a big thing and tell people why. Um, typically, well, with them being in a, an area where they're uh, free roaming with all these other cats, somebody could have diarrhea and you don't catch it right away if you don't see them using the litter box. So if you see somebody who drops weight all of a sudden, um, there's obviously something going on. Yes. You know, a few ounces, like four ounces, that's four to six ounces. Sometimes it's a, almost a pound within a week. That's too fast. That's too fast. Something's and when they only weigh on. eight pounds, typically, or let's just say it's a bigger cat, like the one walking in front the, of the camera Yeah, now. the adults. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's say he's 10 pounds. One pound is a tenth of their weight. Mm -hmm. Figure out what your weight is and take a tenth off of that. And in one week, drop that weight. That's too fast. Yeah. So we are on it because we weigh them constantly. And we look for all the indicators of what could be going on with these cats. If we touch a cat and they flinch their mouth, we know that they might have a dental issue. Mm -hmm. People don't even do that in their own homes with their own cats. People. Yeah drop off cats here you know we take in their cats a lot of these older cats and these people have had these cats years yeah and they have no clue that their cat has a major dental issue mm -hmm. that's causing them to have behavioral issues and now we've taken that cat in and now we have to go to the vet and spend over three hundred dollars yeah. that we don't have but we're gonna do it because they deserve it and we fix those teeth so let's go back to local vets. Um, come on in. Just please. come on in, yeah, please. please. We invite you to come in and see the work that we do here. Yes, there are going to be cats that go home and break with something. Mm -hmm. That's every single rescue, every single one, because that's how it works in their system. They're going to harbor things. We're going to see that they look healthy. And that immunity, because of the stress of going to a new home, is going to drop. And who knows what's in your home? You've got right. cats. They look healthy. Cats can be just plain carriers, a carrier of a, of a virus. But they're not going to get it, but they can carry it. 
yeah. and pass it on to the next cat. So um, your experience with us is, it, normally is exceptional. We have tons of great feedback. Yes. Time after yeah. time after time after time after time. Love it, love it, love it. They're great, healthy, took them to the vet, healthy. Mm -hmm. But there's going to be those times. Yeah. There's going to be those times. So let's get on to Wendy. And we don't even need to yeah, move if Mike, right Mike from Armstrong here, thank you, Mike. We're just going to let him focus on Wendy on the floor. Not Wendy. Win, windy. Windy. Like a windy day. Like a windy day. And her story. Uh, she she was brought in um, by a woman. Uh, she was originally adopted here from mm -hmm. here from us, um, and uh, she had her for about a year, and um, she was from uh, Eastern Europe, um, and f something came about where she had to move back to Europe, and she could not take the cat with her. She, so, was, she was devastated. devastated. Yeah, to so. say the least devastated she was yeah. it was hard for her to leave mm -hmm. she cried yes this cat was so loved she was yep super she loved spoiled. <laughs> and as you can see there are no cats around us just windy <laughs> <laughs> she does not like other cats she was in a home by herself but she does pretty well here um, she, she but does. she likes people. Yeah, she does. That's she her loves thing. Attention. Oh my gosh, this cat loves people. You can pick her up. She was very loved. Mm -hmm. And it was just an unfortunate thing that this gal could not take her. Um, so if you really want a kitty that wants to be with you all the time, come and get Wendy. She's only, um, she's coming up on three years old. In April, she'll be three years old. And she has a very fancy coat color. Um, well, I would say that she's a Harlequin, but I think on the other side of her is more orange mm -hmm. than, than white. Uh, so she's technically a bi-color cat. Um, bi-color meaning two colors, about half orange tabby and the other half white. But what a pretty girl. She is. She's and a nice sweetheart. girl too, yeah. Well, let's get on to these kittens. And I always like to say there are there are two T's in the word kitten. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot of people call us up and ask for kittens. 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 <laughs> and we just go, all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Very common, though. That's a kitten. <laughs> this is a kitten. That's Black Panther. This is Black Panther. Oh, these are great stories, this one and this one. All right, so I'm going to give you Black Panther, and I'm going to get Cagney out of here. Because I bottle fed both of them. Yes, you did. Yes, I did. I bottle feed my husband and I bottle fed about 25 kittens in a row. Um, not singularly, sometimes they were in litters, but there was about 25, right, over mm. the course of about 10 weeks. No, 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 not quite that long. I think there was five straight weeks that we were round the clock bottle feeding and yeah. a couple extra weeks where we could Just take these, a break. All these groups that came in around the same time. Oh boy, I'll tell you, we were exhausted, but it was so worth it when you see these guys. So we why don't you talk about Black Panther. Nicknames, um, this was for all these different groups. So this was the Lafayette kittens. Right, uh, just down the street. They were down the street. Listen to that purr, put it right up to the microphone. Mike, can you hear that? Oh, uh, love. Favorite sound in the whole world is a purr. Favorite smell in the whole world, gotta say, puppy breath. Really? I love puppy breath. I just go like this to a puppy. <laughs> just breathe on me because that puppy breath, when they're nursing on the mom, they have the best breath <laughs> that they'll ever have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so best purr in the world. And look at this. You got What's little you got some paper, paper on, on there. That's not a white tail. That's a paper <laughs> stuck to her, his tail. So, yes, so Black Panther, we have this story Don't in the that. paper. WKYC um, has this really cool um, YouTube. Is it YouTube or is it? Um, I think they. I think it is just part of their website, their own like little uh, channel. Might be YouTube. Yeah, and it's about all good news, and um, nothing but good news. Are like I think that's what it's called. Nothing mm -hmm. but good news, and they just do happy stories. And I had sent this to a whole slew of our um, 
newspapers and advertisers and said, hey, there's this really cool story about these kittens and I shared it in, in a nutshell. I was leaving one Saturday evening. Uh, I was here late. My husband had come up to do some technology here for us and he was helping me carry stuff out to the car mm -hmm. and everybody else was gone. I was going out the side of the building, quite far from the front of the building where people usually come in to adopt and a pickup truck pulled in and drove right to the front door and drove past it really slowly, turned around and drove past it again really slowly and I turned to my husband and I said, they have kittens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're looking to drop off kittens. And I had two choices, get in the car quick and get out of Dodge. <laughs> <laughs> Or turn back around and address the situation. Yeah. And of course, I turned back around and I addressed the situation. And I got up to the, the pickup truck, and uh, this guy says, uh, We have a box of kittens. And uh, here in the back seat was this blonde, white blonde hair. I think they call them towhead kids, you know, yeah. they're blonde hair, blue eyed. 12 year old, uh, he's 10, 10 mm -hmm. year old little boy. I think he's 12. Oh, I mean, he yeah. may be 12, yeah. So he's super bright kid. Yeah, look at Kegney. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he had a box, they had him in a tote, and oh. open, uh, an open tote. And um, I looked at that little boy and I'm like, come on in. <laughs> I'm, I'm not telling this child, no, those big blue eyes, and he's looking at me like, please help. And I'm like, Go ahead and park, come on in, we'll take care of you. So we bring them in and there's five little kittens in there and they were this big, about that big and soaking wet. Their faces were like pasted shut with dirt and food and mm -hmm. they were just disgustingly dirty. And here what happened was their mother had got hit by, had gotten hit by a car and dad, Jeremy, saw her in the road mm -hmm. and told his son, Wyatt, and Wyatt took it upon himself with no, no urging from his dad or anyone mm -hmm. else. He took it upon himself. He wanted to save the kittens under the porch because they had heard them crying, yeah. the newborn kittens and so forth. So um, at that point, they were, what, about four weeks old, mm -hmm. five weeks old-ish. And... Um, they were not friendly. They were feral kittens. Yeah. Uh, because no one had touched them to that point. It took him three days to coax all, the fifth one at a time over yeah, the three days. Couldn't get to them. Couldn't get to them. There was just a little hole that the mom would go into. So he'd have to coax them out and wait for them to come out. It was raining. He, he was out there <laughs> day and night for three straight days. He got home. Well, on Saturday, he tried all day, and that fifth one finally caught, came out, and Aww. he snagged it, and immediately, Dad jumped in the car and came here, and that's how that happened. Mm -hmm. So that right then is when he got that fifth kitten, put him in the bin, and figured they could just drop him off here, which mm -hmm. is not how it works normally. Right. But of course, you tell that child <laughs> no. <laughs> I wasn't telling that child no. <laughs> And um, going, so it turns out that um, they ended up adopting two. Mm -hmm. We had a gal here say, um, I'll give you Cagney, um, <laughs> I, need, uh, I need one. That uh, I'll, I'll pay for the adoption dead if you'll let him keep one. And of course, Wyatt looked at his dad with those big blue eyes, and dad couldn't say no. <laughs> and a few days later, uh, maybe a week or so later, he said, Dad, texted me and said, uh, hey, I don't think a kitten should be by itself. I think we'll adopt a second one. So they actually adopted two of the mm -hmm, five, they and did. they're super sweet. And it is on um, WKYC, and I'm about to put their follow-up on there. And uh, But Black Panther is the last of the five, and mm -hmm. there's nothing wrong with Black Panther other than he's black, and black kind of gets... She was the runt. She was the smallest out of all of them. Yeah, I think it's a boy. It's a girl. We Black thought Panther. It was a boy at first. Oh, so we have we have it marked down wrong, huh? 
So. Not on her paperwork. Though. Oh, okay. <laughs> so anyway, well, okay, so it's a girl. <laughs> um, and she does have a pink collar. <laughs> Good indicator, Wendy. Uh, so that was her story. So and um, so when they came in, I took them home for a couple of days and bottle fed and w did whatever. And then they went to a superior foster home, mm -hmm. one of our superior foster homes, and they're just... Nothing left of that feralness mm -mm. at all. They're cuddle mm -mm. bugs. This group, so this group was another cool story, um, but this is our life here. Mm -hmm. Every day we have a story to tell you. Uh, one night I got a call at 11.30 at night from the police, and my phone said Medina City Police, and I was like, do mm -hmm. I answer it? I was sitting at my kitchen table working on kitten crazy paperwork, <laughs> Um, and uh, it was the police, so I'm like, uh, get it. And I said, honey, the police are calling. <laughs> <laughs> so I picked it up, and they asked if I would take in a litter of kittens that was found under a bush. It was, again, raining outside, mm -hmm. and a, a woman had called and said she thought she heard prowlers, called the police, and the police got there, and here was this box of wet baby, tiny mm -hmm. baby kittens. Stop doing that, people. Hmm. You are putting, I mean, I realize that we have to tell a lot of people no. Mm -hmm. All right, get your cat spayed and neutered. And if it is your cat, it's get it spayed and neutered. And if it's not your cat, call the city, call the county, call somebody and say, we need to have a program in Medina County where if you don't want your cat, you need to have somewhere to take it because they took that away, that option away when they closed down the dog shelter for taking in any unwanted pets. Yes, they got euthanized, but they didn't get drowned. They didn't get shot. They didn't get left out in people's bushes as much. Yes. Uh, they had, Suffering people had somewhere to go to take them. We have nowhere in town. SPCA won't take them. You call them right now. They have we're a recording right saying, we're full, we're full. They get all this money from the city, we get zero dollars. So when we have a situation where we have a cat that we know of that has an issue that needs help, we usually take them. Because mm -hmm. there's nowhere else for you folks to take them. And that is because we let a few people that had an issue change the landscape of how cats are taken care of here. Mm -hmm. So it's time to have the county or the city readdress this issue and have somewhere for these cats to go if they are unwanted, because this is crazy. So the police tried to call the SPCA, couldn't get anybody to answer them, and they actually had remembered that they were here because we had some issue with the uh, fire detectors or whatever oh, yeah, and the yeah. guy goes I think I remember this girl's number <laughs> <laughs> I had given him my cell phone number and I said if you guys ever need anything give us a call and he he wrote it down yeah. called me at 1130 brought the cats over at midnight these little kittens and they were true bottle feeders they were teeny tiny tots mm -hmm. and so I had them my husband and I I should say because he's been doing a lot of bottle feeding thank you sweetheart um, and we had them for quite a while, got them up on their feet to the point where they were eating and then sh sent them off to a foster home so we could take the next set of bottle feeders, mm -hmm. you know, in line of the 25. But uh, so Cagney, we, we had, so we named him after the police, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So the kind police officer, <clears throat> his name was Travis, is Ty Travis. Tyler. 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 I'm sorry, Tyler. Tyler was adorable and he was taking pictures of me bottle feeding the baby that night and Aww. he was so excited that they were going to be taken care of uh, they all lived we have them all mm -hmm. and um cagney is uh, just gorgeous uh i was talking the whole time and didn't say what color she is very unusual color uh, we have a kitty chewing on mike's <laughs> cord in the background cujo and uh, that's Cujo. That is Cujo. <laughs> now we know why her name's Cujo. 
<laughs> but um, uh, we named him Cagney and Lacey, Starsky and Hutch, Magnum, and Tyler. And Tyler, yeah. <laughs> I had to name one after Tyler. So, but uh, Cagney's the last one here. She's the last one. And I yeah. don't know why, because she's absolutely she's gorgeous. Gorgeous. Caramel Tabaco. She's very rare. Very adventurous. Very she's adventurous. Gotta, very curious. She's yes. got to be doing something. Cuddly, huggable. We've well raised this this crew. Mm -hmm. So, and I um, I definitely called the police office uh, police station and said, "Hey, come on in. They're here. Mm -hmm. Nobody stopped by, but that's okay. They knew that they were taken care of, and they did. Uh, so, kudos to Medina City mm -hmm. Police for doing." above and beyond. They could have just left him there and said, nah, my job. So they did a great thing. So we've got a lot of kitties. I took up a lot of time telling stories, but uh, hopefully that gives we've you got, an idea of what goes on around here. We've got about uh, eight, eight to 10 kittens that are available this week. Under three months old. Yeah, yeah, they're about this under size. Under three months old. So. Black so Panther. Antsy. She's so antsy. And Cagney ran off. She's over there. Yeah. Uh, having a ball with all the adults. And uh, I don't oh, know if Curly, Mike. Curly's playing with Curly's her. Curly's playing with her. Kitty, 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 kitty. Come here. Kitty, 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 kitty. Oh, this is what happens. She's coming. Because I teach him that at my house. <laughs> kitty, 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 kitty. So she, she, she went, what? That means food. So anytime I pop a can of it, kitty, 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 kitty. Come here, Cagney. Kitty, 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 kitty. kitty. Oh, someone just hissed and scared her. Oh, she's there she goes. Up now. She was coming this way, and now she's like, "Big cat, big cat, <laughs> big cat." <laughs> she, she puffed Kiki all up. Um, so I train my kittens right from day one, before they even get their syringe of milk. I go kitty, 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 and then I feed them, and every single one of them, I can call. After a couple weeks, kitty, 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 kitty. If they're not preoccupied, kitty, 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 kitty. Come on, she's she starts to come, and then something happens. But um, but she knows it very well. And my cats are all trained to come to kitty, kitty, kitty because they know snack or something's coming good. But at least I know I can call them, and I can do a head count in my house, especially with the kittens because. Um, I need to sometimes oh. pack them up and bring them in, <laughs> and then I'm going, where where in the world are they all, you know? So I call Kitty Kitty, everybody comes. Hi, Cagney. And she pretty. Come just, and get her. I ready love to take you. Off. I Look love this babies. Kisses and hugs, everybody. Um, we're after Halloween and before Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Today is uh, my nephew Michael's birthday. Happy birthday, Michael. November 4th. Okay. So that's the end of today's show. Bye. Say goodbye. Bye. 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 Thanks for watching. You are my best friend. You are my best friend. We'll walk this road from the start to the end. You are my best friend.